So breaking news, Vivek Ramaswamy just tore down the house with this fiery speech at the RNC, and I have some thoughts on it, but first, we might as well play the entire thing in full because it's not too long, and I truly think it is an important message, not just for conservatives, but for the entire country to hear. So that said, here was Vivek Ramaswamy speaking. Take a listen. We're in the middle of a national identity crisis right now. Faith patriotism, hard work, and family have disappeared, only to be replaced by race, gender, sexuality, and climate. But we're not going to win this election just by criticizing the other side. We're going to win this by standing for our own vision of who we really are. What does it mean to be a Republican in the year 2024? What does it mean to be an American in the year 2024? It means we believe in the ideals of 1776. It means we believe in merit, that you get ahead in this country, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character and your contributions. It means we believe in the rule of law. And I say this as the kid of legal immigrants to this country. That means your first act of entering this country cannot break the law. That is why we will seal the southern border on day one. Thank you. It means the people who we elect to run the government ought to be the ones who actually run the government, not unelected bureaucrats in the deep state. These are not black ideas or white ideas. They are not even Democrat ideas or Republican ideas. They are American ideas that we fought a revolution to secure. And the man who will revive these ideals in the United States of America is your next president, the 47th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. If you want to seal the border, vote Trump. If you want to restore law and order in this country, vote Trump. If you want to reignite the economy in this country, vote Trump. If you want to revive national pride in this country, vote Trump. If you want to make America great again, vote Trump. But there is one more reason I'm going to ask you to vote Trump, and it's the most important one. It's the one the media won't talk about, but it's the truth. Donald Trump is the president who will actually unite this country, not through empty words, but through action. Because you know what? Success is unifying. Excellence is unifying. That's who we are as Americans. That's who we've always been. To those of you watching this at home tonight, I'd like to deliver a message that the media doesn't want you to hear from the Republican Party. Our message to black Americans is this. The media has tried to convince you for decades that Republicans don't care about your communities, but we do. We want for you what we want for every American. Safe neighborhoods, clean streets, good jobs, a better life for your children, and a justice system that treats everyone equally, regardless of your skin color and regardless of your political beliefs. Our message to every legal immigrant in this country is this. You're like my parents. You deserve the opportunity to secure a better life for your children in America. But our message to illegal immigrants is also this. We will return you to your country of origin. Not because you're all bad people, but because you broke the law. And the United States of America was founded on the rule of law. Our message to millennials, speaking as one myself, yes, it's true. Our government sold us a false bill of goods with the Iraq War and the 2008 financial crisis, loading up our national debt that falls on our generation's shoulders, telling us that if we took out college loans, we'd somehow get a head start on the American dream when it hasn't worked out that way. 
but we can't just be cynical about our country because the United States of America is still the last best hope that we have, and we deserve a better class of politician, one who actually tells us the truth, even if it comes with some mean tweets from time to time. And our message to Gen Z is this. You're going to be the generation that actually saves this country. You want to be a rebel? You want to be a hippie? You want to stick it to the man? Show up on your college campus and try calling yourself a conservative. Say you want to get married, have kids, teach them to believe in God and pledge allegiance to their country. Because you know what? Fear has been infectious in this country, but courage can be contagious too. That too is what it means to be an American. And you know what? If you're at home and you disagree with everything I just said, our message to you is this. We will still defend to the death your right to say it, because that is who we are as Americans. We are the country where we can disagree like hell and still get together at the dinner table at the end of it. That is the America I know. That is the America we miss. We do not have to be ancient Rome. We don't have to be this nation in decline. We can still be a nation in our ascent, a nation whose best days, not in some fake politician way, but in a true way, a nation whose best days are actually still ahead of us, still on our way to that shining city on a hill, that country where no matter who you are or where your parents came from or what your skin color is or how long your last name is, <laughs> that you will still get ahead in this country with your own hard work, your own commitment, your own dedication, and that you know what, you are free to speak your mind at every step of the way. That is the American dream. That is what won us the American Revolution. That is what reunited us after the Civil War. That is what won us two world wars and the Cold War. That is what still gives hope to the free world. And if we can revive that dream over group identity and victimhood and grievance, then nobody in the world, not a nation, not a corporation, not a virus, not China, is going to defeat us. That is what American exceptionalism is all about. And that is what we will revive this November when we send Donald J. Trump back to the White House. Thank you all. God bless you and your families. And may God bless our United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So there you have it again, folks. That was Vivek Ramaswamy's live speech at the RNC. Couple things I noticed. And first of all, was simply the reception that he got in the room. And some of you may take that for granted. You may say it's Vivek. Everyone loves Vivek. But let me tell you a quick story. I was in that very building for the first Republican debate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I will tell you this as a firsthand witness, the reception that Vivek got in that room back then was very different different. And I think a big thing that symbolizes is the changing guard internally within the RNC, because obviously back then you had Rana Romney, Neil Con McDaniel in charge of things. You saw the type of people she was inviting. It was the donor class. It was the Haley supporters, et cetera, et cetera. It seemed like Vivek was getting booed out of the building there. But you can see clearly now the RNC under brand new leadership, brand new, much better leadership. The reception in the room is much, much different. So just something I want to point out, because I think that does tell you a lot about the changing in leadership here. And I know some of you may have criticisms, especially of last night of the RNC, you know, this or that. But overall, OK, I do think it is a positive sign that our party is moving in the right direction, that in that same building almost a year later, the reception is completely opposite. So that is number one. But that said, let us get into discussing some of the substance of this speech. And obviously, I think the first thing I I noticed was the point where he sold a vision to the American people. You know, I think a lot of generic Republican messaging and I think a lot of what we've heard so far at the RNC has been in many ways 
reactionary, right? Joe Biden is bad. Look at inflation. Look at the border, et cetera, et cetera, which is all important messaging. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think a lot of RNC speeches thus far have truly sold a forward looking vision to the American people. And Vivek made a very intentional move to say that even stated it publicly saying, I'm about to sell you a vision. And so he didn't just criticize Joe Biden on the border or on, you know, national crises, sees the economy or anything. He presented, look, this is what we are going to do. Um, further, he pointed out something I thought was a very important piece of messaging and I actually tweeted before the RNC should be the strongest response was that the most important case for voting for Donald Trump was actually unity, right? Unifying the country, because this takes that long argument over Donald Trump being divisive and turns it on his head. And I think he made the strongest case you possibly could make for Trump, which is that success is unifying, right? The success we will see under the next four years as a country will really bring us together. But of course, um, I think the most important thing, arguably, and what really made this the best RNC speech yet, in my opinion, was the way he spoke to everyone, especially the people in America that the GOP does not commonly appeal to. I thought specifically to the moment where he spoke to Gen Z and the millennials, right, to the young people. How often do you really hear Republicans speak to these people directly in a way that we, again, people my age, actually do understand? Because I thought Vivek's message was very strong. He said, look, I'm not going to sell you some some type of generic line about how everything is good in America and young people who complain about the decline of the system. You just don't work hard enough. It was not that type of message. It was, look, you have been lied to. Yes, our generation has been sold out. But at the same time, while we need to hold our leaders, our government and our political establishment accountable, we should not get cynical about America itself and what it has to offer. Right. So he said, look, I understand you've been lied to, the, to by the system, but that's a even bigger reason to be patriotic. I found that to be very powerful when he was talking to millennials. And then when he spoke directly to Gen Z, to my generation, he made an appeal. I think I've made a lot myself, but you don't really hear a lot of these older Republicans understand, which is there are a lot of Gen Z people people my age who really do sympathize with Trump, they may not be the most politically savvy, but they kind of understand it, I guess, intrinsically. But he pointed out there, he played into the natural Gen Z reaction to want to be rebellious. And he said, hey, look, you want to be a real rebel? You want to re be a real punk, a real hippie? Rebel against the system by saying you're a conservative, by supporting Trump, by saying you want to have a family. Again, just a message I thought was really good. So again, um, in many ways, you know, he closed there on that message of hope for the future. It was very Obama-esque in some ways. I definitely did notice that. People have criticized Vivek for that for a long time, including during the Republican primary. But my whole take on that is this. Look, Obama was a terrible president. I disagree with the vast majority of the policies and the ideology that Obama stood for. But one thing simultaneously you cannot deny is that in 2008, especially the image, his speaking style, his style of messaging, even if his ideas were wrong, were actually very powerful. They were inspirational and they were moving to at least certain aspects, certain subsets of the American population. And so in some ways I look at it and I say, yeah, Obama was bad. Yeah, his ideas were bad, but it's undeniable. Just look at the election results. If you want to disagree with me, that his rhetorical strategy was actually effective. And so I thought in some ways, yes, absolutely did notice. I think Vivek watched an Obama speech before this, but using that, which again was very effective. 2008, if I'm not mistaken, was the biggest electoral landslide of the 21st century. What is exactly wrong with borrowing from just a little bit of that rhetorical style but turning it into a conservative, pro-America, anti-leftist, and again, visionary message. I thought it was very brilliant in many ways. So with that said, folks, let me know your thoughts on this speech in the comment section down below. Personally, I'll go out and say this. 
I think that may have been the best RNC speech since the 1992 culture war speech delivered by Pat Buchanan. That was not from the candidate, right? From a third party, someone who is not on the ticket that gave a speech um, of those types of RNC speeches. And don't get me wrong, maybe I was too young to see some of them. But again, really thought that was a good one. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, God bless and peace.